Hello, let me take you through my project. So um, I'm having a little bit of issues in terms of um, getting my project loaded up to dbforfree.net. For some reason, um, some of the indexes and triggers just aren't wanting to load. Um, so for instance, let me see if I can share with you my screen real quick. So for instance, this is what, you know, like I'm able to get some of my tables uploaded to DB for free. So for instance, this is one of my tables artists. So you can see it's got artist ID, name, birthplace, style, test, um, just some of the other attributes um, associated with it. You can see I have other um, tables such as customer, gallery, a trigger test table. Um, but for some reason, some of my um, syntax just isn't working when it comes to uh, me uploading onto dbforfree.net. So instead, I'm going to take you through uh, my project just using the um, SQL Lite 3. Um, so yeah, let me restart the, the kernel and we'll, uh, we'll go through it. Restart. Okay. So, uh, like I said, um, what I'm creating is an art gallery. Um, and so for, for my project, my project's super simple. All I have is three tables. Um, the first table is an artist table, which stores information about an artist. The second table is a gallery table, which stores information about specific artwork. And then the third table is a customer table, um, which stores information about customers who might be um, purchasing artwork. So for instance, um, I'm just creating the tables here. So for instance, let me create the artist table. So I didn't do that. Then I'm creating the gallery table here. Um, one thing to notice is that um, the foreign key from um, the gallery cable, uh, the gallery table references um, the artist ID um, from the artist table. Um, and then finally, I'm creating the customer table as well. And um, the only kind of major difference here is that the customer table, um, the foreign key has a on delete cascade command associated with it. So um, that will be utilized later on. Um, so the first thing I created here is just an index. Um, so I'm just creating an index for my artist, um, just my artist name, because obviously a lot of people would want to look up your the artist name super quickly. Um, so I'm creating an index for that. So do that. Um, and then um, for the triggers, what I did is I just decided to create a trigger table um, where when a trigger would activate, um, another table called the trigger table would get updated. So for instance, creating the trigger table. And then um, this is what, what's going on um, within the trigger. When the trigger is activated um, in the trigger table, it, the value passed gets um, expressed. So we'll activate that. And then we'll throw some values into our table. So this is just inserting values into our artist table. And then we'll insert a value into our gallery table. And then we'll test the trigger uh, table. So we can see when we test it, we have three passes, one, two, three. Um, and then when we insert a new value into our artist table, what we see happens to the trigger table is that we now get another pass. So up above we had one, two, three passed. Now we get one, two, three, four. Um, so just this essentially just shows you that the trigger is actually working. Um, and then this is um, showing the index um, and showing that the index is working. So for instance, I use this command explain que uh, query plan um, and it can it shows you that you're actually using the index value index artist um, and then additionally um, what the index is is that it says that um, no uh, it, it specifies that name has to be unique and so in this case um, for instance 
um, or saying that the name, um, you know, ZZZ can't be duplicated. And so down below, if we try to insert another value where the name of the artist is ZZZ, um, what we'll see is that we get an error message, which we should get because the name according to the index has to be unique and we've already inserted a value ZZZ. Um, so we can't insert another value. Um, so yeah, this error message is to be expected and shows that the index is actually working. Um, then we're going to insert um, values into our next table, which is the gallery table. This is what stores information about the artwork itself. And then we're going to do a simple join um, just to show that um, the foreign keys are actually working. So we're joining the artist table with the gallery table um, and just doing an inner join, which shows some of the attributes from both tables combined into one um, output. And so we can see that we get name um, and style from the artist table. Um, and then we get like title, year, cost, and that comes from the gallery table. Um, yeah. And then this is just kind of showing the, uh, the grouping um, functionality that SQL has. So for instance, just a simple query where we're just saying, um, you know, take a couple of the attributes from the gallery table um, where year does not equal 2002. So that's just a um, restriction. Um, and then group by title and then order by max cost. So when we do this, we see that a simple um, result comes up where we see the max cost of 30 under title for title three. 10 for title four, 10 for title one. So just kind of showing you uh, a small output uh, of what uh, a cost for a specific uh, title of artwork might be in case someone was, was wondering. Um, additionally, that, that brings up just constraints. So some of the, I, I use pretty simple constraints. So I've used, you know, primary keys, foreign keys, um, not null values, um, unique. Those were kind of the main constraints that I used. I didn't get super complicated with it. And then down below here is um, showing um, another trigger, um, but this trigger actually updates the value. Um, so for instance, in this trigger, we're updating the value of year within our gallery table to equal null. So we'll run this trigger. And then we'll insert a value into our gallery table. And then we'll do a query on our gallery. And what we see is that our year, um, all the year values have now been turned into null. Um, so that's just a trigger showing um, updates um, you know, on one of our uh, previously created tables. Um, and then um, what we'll do now is we'll insert a few more values into our customer table. So we insert a few values into our customer table. Um, we can see that our customer table has these three values, customer one, two, three, and they're associated with um, values from the gallery table. Um, and so up above, if we go back up real quick, we see that we have an on delete command uh, or an on delete cascade command um, that's um, involved within, within the foreign key of the customer table. And so what should happen here is that when we delete a row from the gallery table, the four, uh, uh, one, that same row or that the, uh, the values that are associated with our work ID in this case, um, in the customer table should also be deleted. And so down below, what we'll see is that our original customer table, we have customer one, customer two, customer three, then we'll delete um, from gallery um, where uh, artwork ID equals art, artwork ID one. So we'll run that. We'll see that if we run the gallery table, we can see that artwork, artwork ID one is no longer there. We see ID, ID two, three, four, five, but no artwork ID 
one. And then if we look back at our customer table, we can see that the deleting effect has cascaded into the customer table as well. Um, so when we run that, we see now we only have customer two and customer three, customer one, um, because it's associated with um, artwork ID one um, has been deleted as well. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of a, a general, um, that, that just kind of shows just some of the requirements um, of the project and just how I went about fulfilling them. Um, so once again, um, you know, obviously this is an SQL um, light three, but um, hopefully that, you know, kind of gives you an idea of how uh, my project operates. So yeah.